Hello, my name is Carla Martinez and I am the Family Resource Specialist for Latina Republic. This presentation is licensing and permit for starting a business for Orange County. Here's an outline so that we are organized on what we're going to be going over. So first we're going to touch upon a food facility. Uh, what is it? Defining it, understanding it. Then we're going to move over to temporary food facility, cottage food operations, carts, trucks, and mobile food facilities. So first, a food facility. What is a food facility? Food facilities can be restaurants, bars, markets, public or private school cafeterias, carts, trucks, food booths at events, uh, certified farmers markets, commissionaries, wholesale food manufacturers, food warehouses. If your food is stored, prepared, packaged, served, or vended, uh, a food and beverage for human consumption at retail wholesale level, all of the above, all must have a valid health permit. So what do I do if I'm taking over an existing food facility or just changing the facility the facility's name? Since food permits are not non-transferable, you must complete a health permit application, uh, add a copy of supporting documentation to the person who is legally responsible for the operation of the facility. Uh, and the next in, uh, information is depending on what kind of uh, business you, you have. Um, and the payment as determined by health inspector at the time of conditional approval, uh, that depends on how much the permit is gonna cost depending if the, uh, one is approved or not. And failure to do so may result in closure food facility and subject to a penalty uh, not to exceed three times the cost of the health permit. So whatever the health, health permit costs, uh, if the individual is found without having a permit, it won't cost more than three times what the permit costs, if that makes any sense. But overall, the idea of this uh, slide is to ensure that folks know that it is important to have a health permit for a food facility uh, and, and for anybody who is, who is taking over the food facility. So information on adding equipment. Here's a question. How about if I plan to build, remodel, bring in new equipment, or change the menu? You should obtain a written approval of your plan or proposal prior to any of the following. Constructing a new food facility, remodeling an existing food facility, making a significant menu change in operations or equipment changes to an existing food facility. I already have a health permit for my restaurant. All I'm doing is adding an oven. Should I get an approval for something that minor? Equipment used in a food facility needs to be approved and meet applicable standards to ensure safety. Every, even small changes can affect the safety operation of other equipment in the food facility. Like for, like, like for like equipment, changes may not require approval. So if it's uh, something that's, very, that's already there um, and has been approved, um, maybe that won't require an approval. You should contact your health inspector and obtain approval for any changes before going through unnecessary costs and unexpected circumstances. So before putting in a new oven, adding in a new menu uh, um, item, it is important to contact the health inspector to ensure that uh, money isn't poured uh, into this, this new idea and this new project and it ends up not being approved. So temporary food facility. Temporary food facility. All food vendors, including permanent restaurants, are required to apply for and obtain a temporary food facility permit when participating in a community event. A TFF permit, which is the temporary food facility permit, for one single food for one for a specific event at a site specific location for a specified period of time. This is very specific. Um, if a vendor is operating more than one booth at an event, for example, if you are, uh, if one is selling popcorn and also selling hot dogs in a different stand, a permit must be obtained for each booth location. One permit does not suffice for, for both. Separate applications must be submitted in this circumstance. If a food vendor will be operating a more than one event in Orange County on the same day, each location must be permitted separately. These required requirements apply to all permit types. Here are examples of events, county fair, music festivals, flea markets, pop-ups, events, etc. How do I obtain a TFF permit? TFF vendor applications and operational specification may be submitted at this email here. And it is simple, uh, we can click on, on the email, highlight it, um, and copy and paste it into Gmail or whatever uh, email server uh, that one uses and email them directly or in person at the Environmental Health Office located on uh, 1241 E Dryer Road, Suite 120 in Santa Ana, California. The TFF application packet submittal is needed at least one month in advance of the event. So if the event is on September 12th, 
the application must be sent August, August 12th, a month before. Once the permit application and supporting documentation is reviewed and approved, the event organizer, our TFF vendor, will be notified to come to the EH office to pay the permit fees and obtain the permit prior to the event. Permit applications received less than three days prior to the event start date will be considered past due and may not be reviewed and approved in time. And sadly, uh, the vendor will not be able to, to sell their food at the event. So here are special events documents. Uh, this one is hi hyperlinked. So if you click on this, you can quickly see the application available. And the same thing for this one. So uh, the categories are divided by type of permit. If you are participating in an event as a food vendor, the event coordinator is in charge of acquiring the event coordinator permit and paying the 184. The category A and B, 1A and 1B are pre-packaged foods. These may be subject to change due to COVID regulations. The category two is for open foods, such as freshly prepared food like sandwiches, fries, carnitas, uh, and that also may be subject to change. Um, the link is um, link for details. So. Uh, I will provide the website on which on this information can be found, uh, but these are the prices as of now. Cottage food operations. Cottage food operations. What are cottage foods? These are foods that are made at home, such as cookies, muffins, and tacos. What foods can you sell? You're allowed to make certain non-potentially hazardous foods. What this means is that the end product that you have has to be listed as approved by the state and shelf stable and does not need refrigeration. And here's the link uh, for the page for cottage foods uh, that we can just uh, click on. And here are information provided uh, regarding cottage food. So um, here we're going to go over the, the class A and class B um, permits. So class A, selling food directly from your house. Uh, or to individuals such as customers at a community event. Class A requires that the operator to register with the local health department. There is no inspection with Class A registration. Class B allows you to sell to retailers who will then resell the food. For example, you sell food to a market or a coffee shop who resells it to their customers. Class B requires the operator to obtain permit for the local health department, uh, depending on your city. You're under Riverside County, but you also need one for the city. Um, they're not separate. It just has to equate with who, uh, what city uh, one is in, one is one is me doing business in. There's a yearly inspection in order to obtain a Class B permit. Uh, you may also operate as a Cottage A class food operation when you have a Class B permit. Um, Requirements and permit longevity for cottage food operations. If you want applying, complete application for a class A or class B operation. Once you have filled out the forms, they would be reviewed to make sure they meet the requirements. You'll be notified by email or phone of your status. You can obtain a packet at our office uh, or by downloading, uh, clicking, simply clicking on this link. Um, you can open the link in a new tab uh, and it is provided here. Well, this is temporary food, cottage, uh, shared food agreement right here. Here's the packet. So just right click on this uh, PowerPoint and you'll be able to have um, access to it. One second, please. View present. Okay. Um, and moving forward, um, how how does how long is the registration permit for the registration permit is as valid as you are the same residence at the same residence uh, and it is for one year so if you are preparing food in your own kitchen uh, or uh, subleasing a kitchen from somebody else i uh, need to make sure that uh, the the uh, residence is provided how much does class a registration or a class b permit cost the fees for july 1st 2019 to june 2020 are as follows the application fee is 54 dollars annual fee for a class a is 40 Two and annual fee for class B is 158 and that is yearly. Do I have to take classes? Yes, you and all others that are part of the operation must take an approved food safety class within 90 days of obtaining your permit or registration. You can find a list of state approved classes. Your training will need to be renewed every three years. 
Restrictions. Are there restrictions? You can only make and store food in your kitchen in an attached storage room that is only used for your home operation. You may, you may hire up to one full-time employee and annual gross sales may not exceed the following, um, 5,000 per calendar year. And cottage foods may not be shipped. Am I subject to complete investi complaint investigations? Do I need to grant access into my home? The environmental health may investigate any complaint received concerning cottage food operations. If your cottage food operation is a subject of a complaint, you must allow representative environmental health in your home uh, to conduct an, an inspection. An investigation uh, or a complaint is, is subject to your circumstance. So um, there is not really an example I can give, um, but you, you may need to grant access uh, to an environmental health inspector into your home to ensure that, there, uh, that there is the safety, safety measures are being taken. Uh, are there labeling requirements? Yes, all cottage food operations um, must meet specified requirements relating to labeling under Sherman law and conform to spe specified uh, federal labeling requirements regarding nutrition, nutrient content, or health claims and food allergens. So if uh, your cottage food uh, has nuts or it has a major food allergen, that must be um, written onto the uh, labeling. Samples of labeling can be found in the cottage food operation packet that I linked uh, this PowerPoint to, which can be found here. So moving forward, how do I renew? You will be sent the link to the renewal form prior to your anniversary month, the month in which you were initially approved. Not, the when, not when you filled out the application, but when you were initially approved. Fill that form and return it two weeks of the, weeks of the of received. If you are a class B operation, you will receive another inspection. As with the initial fee, you will be sent an invoice based on the time spent by California health staff because it does require um, inspection. Please see the section, how much does a class or a class B permit cost so that you know how much they cost. Moving forward, uh, here's some tips for the application process. The application will ask if you are on a private water source, as uh, well as an example of a private water source. If you're source your water from the water district, that is not a private water source. So just to kind of make that distinction. And problems with labels. If your business name and full address are listed in a phone directory, uh, like the yellow pages, uh, either physical or online, uh, maybe you have your own website, then just you can just put the city, so Orange County. Sorry about that. And a uh, state required on the label, so Orange County, California. If you choose to list your business in an uh, online phone directory, somewhere on the application, provide the site on which it is listed. Everything on that sample label provide in the application is required. Don't skip anything. Um, if you're going to make a claim such as gluten-free, you'll need to provide nutritional labor, uh, labeling. This is required by state law. You may uh, use anything from laboratory to free online tools in order to do so. Labeling something as organic requires an approved third party to analyze your product and officially stamp it as organic. If your product contains an ingredient that is natural sugar, it cannot be sugar-free. An example would be that there is no sugar-free fruit, jam, or apple pie. All fruit contains sugar. You are allowed to split the label in two. However, your primary label must state at a minimum made or repackaged in a home kitchen. The name of your cottage food operation, so whatever the name of your business is, and the net weight. Everything else may be on a secondary label. So here are some more additional tips. Common products not approved by the state. Pickles, sandwiches, barbecue sauce, jams with peppers. And here are pictures of those examples. My product isn't on the approved list. Now what? There are two options for you. Operate your own fully permitted food facility, such as a restaurant. Rent or rent a food facility that already has a permit. If you are like other previous cottage food hopefuls, you may not be quite ready for your own facility. If you find a facility that is willing to let you use their kitchen, contact this department at the following number for the appropriate forms and additional information. If you don't already know of a place, you may want to search the internet for shared commercial kitchens in Orange County to find places that have a health permit but were actually designed to be rented out. And I actually have an example of that. And check out this website for more information. You can right click and open up to another tab. Moving forward, we have carts, trucks, mobile food facilities. And here are examples of such. Types of mobile food facilities. Here are examples. Examples of unpackaged trucks and trailers, catering, taco truck, trailers, lunch trucks, hot trucks, chef trucks, or any fully enclosed vehicle used for food preparation activities. All food preparation, cooking, and storage must occur inside of the vehicle and approved commissary. Examples of pre-packaged truck trailers, ice cream trucks, grocery trucks, or any food, mobile food facility that stores and sells only pre-packaged food. 
If packaged perishable foods are sold approved for refrigeration is required on the vehicle. Examples of unpackaged, uh, unpackaged carts, cards selling churros, pretzels, popcorn, shaved ice, hot dogs, and coffee, cappuccino. These carts can serve unpackaged foods with limited food preparation. Examples of prepackaged carts. Carts selling prepackaged ice cream and chips. These types of cars are limited to selling of prepackaged foods only. So here are examples. Um, the first slide had examples of what they look like. So vehicle permit renewal. It is the owner's responsibility to maintain a valid Orange County health permit on the vehicles on the vehicle or to notify this agency in writing at the time of any change in ownership sale of the vehicle or if the vehicle stops operation in Orange County. So if the vehicle um, is changing of owner, if you're going to be selling the vehicle or if the vehicle just like stops operating in Orange County, you must let the Orange County health, uh, health facility know. Vehicles operating without a valid permit are subject to closure. Vehicles with lapsed permit, uh, which means uh, permits are no longer viable, um, will need to meet current California retail food code requirements, which may also involve upgrades and plants in the middle before a permit is issued. So um, they also want to make sure that the floor plan is safe. For more information, please call the following number. And here are instructions to accessing uh, vehicle information and application. Uh, first, you can copy this to the URL. So we open this in a new link. Here we go. And here is uh, the information, how to obtain the permit um, and other following guidelines. Like I mentioned, um, here's English or Spanish. And a cool trick uh, is being able to translate the web page um, you accept and everything is translated into Spanish or any other uh, language um, that you're comfortable with. So moving forward, um, these are just instructions for what I just uh, did. Some of these forms are instructional or only serve as infographics to inform people on what com commissaries are approved for food storing. Some of these forms are not available in Spanish or other languages. Uh, you may be able to call the Orange County Healthcare Agency at this following number to get these forms uh, translated or if you need a prepare. Resources for business entrepreneurs. So Fourth Street Market was created to foster new and emerging ideas from Orange County's most creative food makers and entrepreneurs. Um, our food hall is designed to launch innovative companies and bring the newest concepts to anyone looking to try the flavors of the cutting edge. So here are, uh, this is a really cool resource for individuals who are looking for kitchens to cook their prepare their food in or to um, get classes. So what is the Fourth Street Market uh, and what services and opportunities does it offer? It's an East End Incubator Kitchens. East End Incubator Kitchens are Fourth Street's mar markets fully equipped commercial kitchen spaces for rent. Uh, so you can spend the uh, rent this space instead of having to get a permit for your own home. Um, this space is ideally designed for food production, personal chefs and caterers, as well as delivery, ghost kitchen, cloud kitchen, dark kitchen uses, and virtual kitchen, virtual restaurants uses. These commercial kitchens may be rented for about an hour or a month, utilizing access to the market's 8,000 uh, square foot basement which includes a commissary dry storage cold free storage and packing and labeling room so this is a really cool opportunity um, for individuals who don't have a space to prepare the food or don't want to get a permit or can't get a permit uh, they have these cool opportunities called the Culinary Lab School, um, and it just uh, brings techniques uh, and immersive students in experimental modern hands-on education for all levels of cooks, aspiring chefs, serious home cookers, and industry professionals alike. Um, there are three programs you can choose from, the Culinary School, the Pastry School, and the Home Cooking, um, and the information about them is provided down below. Uh, and it's a really cool opportunity that, that they offer if one is trying to get into cooking or wants to get um, more experience in the kitchen. So all the information in this PowerPoint can be found on this website. Uh, you right click here and it opens on the tab. And here's all the information in this, in this PowerPoint is provided here. Uh, food, cottage food operations, downloads, food board illnesses, food facility permits, all of which I've talked about is provided here. So wrapping it up, this presentation is filled with useful information about where to find permits. This, however, is not intended to tell you how to apply, but rather how to inform you on specific business ventures, tips for filling out those applications, special links for downloading these documents, filling them out or emailing or faxing them to the appropriate department. I'm not the appropriate department. Um, all permits are different and ask for different requirements. Uh, please visit the website. 
call the main office for more information and talk to a representative. Um, these are kind of very information and detail driven application and steps and processes. Um, and my goal is to ensure that, uh, you know, there's a, a website provided, tips provided and opportunities provided. Uh, or you can find uh, for your own city, the office number here, right clicking and seeing, uh, depending on your city in Orange County, who you can contact for more information regarding permits. So thank you so much for uh, listening, for taking the opportunity to learn more about uh, uh, how to get permits. And uh, here's our website and here's our email. So you can contact us if you have any more questions. Thank you.